Welcome to the Firewater Review, a weekly podcast dedicated to whiskey reviews. On this week's episode, we're going to be reviewing Four Roses Small Batch 2017 Limited Edition 50th Anniversary Al Young. We are joined by Aaron Malamed, also known as Windy City Whiskey. I am your host, Seth Brown. I am joined, as always, by my co-host, Aaron Cave. How's it going, fellas? Good. Pretty good over here. Excellent. Excellent. Well, welcome to the show, Aaron. Thank you. Yes, welcome. Aaron in Chicago. We have two Aarons. This might get confusing. I yeah. know. So, yeah, that's a, uh, a mouthful there, introducing what we're reviewing today. And I would like to thank you for sending samples, kind sir. Yeah. Yes. My pleasure. So, tell us a little bit about yourself, Aaron. Uh, so, I run an Instagram account called Windy City Whiskey, and that's whiskey with an E. I got into bourbon pretty seriously maybe a year and a half ago. I was always somewhat of a bourbon drinker and a whiskey drinker, thanks to my parents. And I was always kind of posting here and there on Instagram, so I decided to just go full-fledged, make make an Instagram account and promote whiskey and kind of the whiskey lifestyle. And it's just kind of gotten bigger and bigger. And this is kind of my first review, so I'm branching out, and it's been a lot of fun. Excellent. Yeah, that's awesome. Hopefully you're not nervous. You're not nervous, are you? Yeah, you know, it's a, a little bit just... It's weird being on uh, the side of the microphone instead of the speakers. Yeah. Yep. It's fun, though. Once you get into it, you get used to it. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's good. It's good fun. Yeah. Yeah, we're just three guys talking bourbon. That's all it is. It's always a good time. Always. So, anything else to add? Otherwise, we'll let Mr. Cave give a little background on this. Well, I actually have a couple things to add, just because, you know... Aaron reached out to me and was just interested in, he he said he loved the show and he was wondering how we picked our guests. And I was like, you know, we don't really pick our guests. It's just, if anyone wants to be on and you got something cool, you want us to sample and you want to send samples. Yeah, we'll, we'll have you on. So uh, he reached out to me and um, was like, Hey, I know you guys are thinking about doing Al Young. I can send you samples. And, uh, and that's why he's here. So it was kind of cool that I just reached out and wanted to, you know, get on the show. So if anyone's out there is wanting to be on the show, there's no criteria to be on the show. We're not looking for a specific uh, guess. We, we give you a quiz that you have to pass, but no, we don't. That's just, that's just our names. Yes. So hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that, that's really cool, man. We're, we're glad that you reached out and we love having guests on. It's always fun having guests on it. Uh, not that I don't enjoy talking to, to Aaron, but, you know, it's always fun to get someone else else's perspective on on the whiskey. Aaron's palate and mine are are very similar in most cases, and it's always nice to to have a little uh, something different in there. Maybe sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Would you like to tell folks about the Al Young release? Yeah, yeah. So I, I feel like we've been doing a lot of four risks lately, which isn't a bad thing. No, but uh, you won't hear me complain. Yeah, so this is the 50th year anniversary for Al Young. So started back in uh, 67, and he, just like any other person, man, he started down kind of at the low end of the ladder and worked his way up. Uh, in uh, 1990, he became the uh, manager, uh, the distillery manager, and then uh, 2007 is when he became the brand ambassador. And uh, 2010, he actually wrote a book about uh, Four Roses, and that's when he kind of was started to be known as the historian. I mean, he's done a lot for the brand. Uh, he's been around a long time, and this was just their way of saying thank you to uh, Al for, you know, 50 years at any place is, is big. So this is amazing. And so he works side by side with Brett Elliott picking uh, this recipe out. It's, it's a really cool recipe if you guys haven't looked into it. It's a five percent of a twenty-three year old uh, OBSV, and then there's twenty-five percent of a fifteen year old OBSK, a fifty percent uh, thirteen year old OESV, and then twenty percent 
of a 12 year OBSF. So they are like just covered the map with these recipes, I think, because they have some E's, some B's, they got the F, they got the K. So you got some nice floral notes, but you still got some nice big spicy notes. Um, and then the V's that are just soft and creamy. It's, uh, they, they knocked this one out of the park. Anyone that's tasted this loves it, I feel like. And it's, yeah, I think it's a great release. I think they did a really good job in honoring, honoring uh, out with this because it's, uh, it's phenomenal. But um, the thing I really love about this is the bottle. Yes. You know, they they took this bottle and modeled it after the year he started. So that bottle was sitting on the shelf when he started at Four Roses in 67. And I just think that's amazing that they could do something like that. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I feel like we've we've done quite a few Four Roses and you know, I've, I've hit on all the recipes and stuff like that. So I don't have much to talk about about that. But um this is a really cool release because this is a special release. It's not even their normal small batch release. It's it's something on top of that to honor someone that's put so much service into that uh, into the company. Yeah, yeah, because they're coming back out with the the regular 2017 small batch as well. I think it's kind of starting to hit shelves already. If I'm not mistaken, I don't I don't know if it's up there in Chicago yet. Aaron, have you seen or heard any of the the I guess the normal, you know, more uh, regular 2017 limited edition yet. So Illinois is pretty slow on getting the releases. Uh, so we definitely have not received it yet. And I'm guessing it's maybe a month out. Okay. Yeah. I'm not sure why, but we're, we're pretty behind on most things. That really surprises me. Cause I mean, being in Chicago, you would think you guys would be getting all the releases right away. You know, especially with the big whiskey bars you got there. You got Delilah's. Uh, have you ever been to Twisted Spoke? I've been to Twisted Spoke only once. Oh, man. They, you got to go. Wednesdays are half off, half off whiskey Wednesdays. Every, every single whiskey that they have, it's half off whatever their price is. So, and they price pretty well. Yeah, that's a pretty, pretty good deal. Yeah, that sounds like a must. I need to get yeah. to Chicago. Oh, yeah. It's... Uh, I you know it's I was there it was last year around Memorial Day and we went to the Twisted Spoke but it was a uh, Saturday morning and no Sunday morning sorry and I was looking at their menu and they had all kinds of just really great stuff on the menu and I was looking through and the night before I wanted to try we were at Delilah's and I wanted to try Wild Turkey's American Spirit. And I did try it there, but Twisted Spoke had it. For, and I mean, for awesome price, it was like maybe 12 or $14 a pour. So I got a pour of that. And that was right when Seasoned, uh, seasoned Wood came out for the E.H. Taylor. And uh, I saw that and I was like, oh, I'll get a pour of that as well. And so I got a pour and she pulled it down. It was The bottle was just about empty and uh, it was a $12 pour. And So she poured like what was like two ounces and then kind of looked at the bottom and then she was like, no, fuck it. And pour the rest (laughs) in. And so I had, I had like a nice, like almost like four to five ounce pour. (laughs) And then, but then I look at my watch and it's like 10 30 AM. I'm like, Oh, this is going to be a great day. (laughs) But, uh, but no, they're, they're known for their brunches too. I think there, there was a ton of people there like up on the rooftop eating brunch. And you know, here, here's me and my buddy sitting there at the bar. He's ordering craft beers and, that, that, I mean, that was our only time to go. So I was like, well, 10 a.m., let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> great start to the day. Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, yeah, but I love Chicago, man. You guys got so many great liquor stores there. You, you know, I know you freak with the Binnies because you were uh, nice enough to send me some bottles. And I, I have not opened them yet, but I they're, they're going to be soon because I'm trying to finish off a couple other uh, Knob Creeks that I have open. So hopefully soon I can get into those. Yeah, you've got plenty of Knob Creeks to go through. <laughs> I know. I, I was going to say I'm not lacking in Knob Creek, so I just want to thank you for sending me those. It's always good. I mean, the bourbon people are just so great, you know, just willing to share the wealth and spread it around. And Absolutely. So you're a, uh, a Benny's shopper? Yes, I'm a big Benny's shopper. Uh, I do venture onto other stores just because you kind of have to, right. uh, or else you, you do limit yourself. Benny's is definitely the biggest 
and they have uh, a great selection. But sometimes you just got to go into some small hole in the wall store and hope to find something special. Yeah. Uh, wasn't didn't uh, Chris Williams of Roundtable didn't he work at Benny's for a while? Yeah, he used to work there. Yeah. Yeah. Him and his uh, the co his uh, partner. Both, That's uh, right. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. So maybe you ran into him at some point. I don't know how long ago it was that he worked there, but anyway. So yeah, Al Young is in in addition to release to the rest of their their small batch and limited edition releases, rather. Anything else to add, gentlemen? I don't I don't think so. I think I cover most of it. I mean I just what blows me away is that twenty three year uh in there. That's just I know. It's crazy. I remember seeing the when this was originally announced and they released the the ages and the the recipes that were going to be included in it and I mean that's almost twice as old as most four roses releases oh yeah you don't ever see one that's in the 20s or at least I never have that I'm aware of I think they did a good job with uh kind of only putting about 5% in because uh I mean at 23, I can only imagine the oakiness in there. And with, with it being a small batch, I think they balanced it pretty well. But I guess yeah. I'm, I'm getting into notes that I shouldn't get into quite yet. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'll just keep I'll just keep the rest of myself, and we'll talk about it later. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Well, why don't we take a quick break and jot down some notes and share them when we get back? All right. Excellent. Well, when we return, we will do just that. Welcome back, everybody. In the break, we've been sipping on and chatting about Four Roses Small Batch 2017 Limited Edition Barrel Strength Al Young 50th Anniversary. That is a mouthful. Yeah. A mouthful of good whiskey is what that is. So, per usual format, Mr. Cave will share his notes and then we'll send it over to Aaron, our guest, and he can share his. And then I will bring up the rear, the rear per usual. Mr. Cave, take it away, sir. Oh, man. This nose. <laughs> that's, uh, it's, that's phenomenal. That's, uh, it, it blows me away how much is going on there. Uh, right off the bat, I get nice wafts of uh, maple syrup, toffee, some brown sugar, uh, nice caramel notes. Um, it's got a lot of good fruity notes in there, too. It's uh, I get a lot of uh, dried fruits, like uh, dates, plums, some raisins. Um, but it's uh, it has the bright, fresh fruits as well. I get some apples and pears. Um, and then there's just great spice to it as well. I, I get a lot of rye. Um, I catch the nutmeg, a little bit of cinnamon, um, but what really I, I pick up a lot is there's a ton of leather in this nose for me. Yeah. Um, and seasoned oak, uh, there's a lot of seasoned oak, and then uh, just a hint of uh, barrel char. Um, but I mean, it, this nose is just when you bring it all together, it is so well balanced, and it just I, I want to I I could just sit here and smell this all day long. Tell you the truth, I don't, I don't even need to drink it. Speaking of drinking it, the palate, man, just right off the bat, just great sweetness, uh, butterscotch honey, a little bit of maple syrup, uh, but it's got some really nice spice to it. Get a little cinnamon, get the rye, uh, get a little bit of nutmeg still in there, and clove. Um, it has a uh, little bit of chocolate floating in there, too. Uh, I guess some toasted cons. It's, it's bringing some really good fruit flavors to it. Uh, I get a uh, some some berry notes. I, I had a hard time kind of picking out. If I had to pick one type of berry, I was thinking raspberry, but I'm yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, it's got some good citrus, a little bit of orange peel in there. Uh, the leathers present, and uh, some nice charred oak. Um, it's just a real, really well rounded uh, palate, and uh, the finish is long. Uh, a lot of rye, and uh, I get some mints, uh, a little bit of vanilla, nutmeg. Uh, some nice pepper notes and oak. All in all, this is uh, it's a 
great bourbon. I mean, the mouthfeel uh, on the palate is, I would say, perfect. Uh, for me, I like it a little bit more oily, but this is like the perfect in between thin and thick mm-hmm. for me. Um, I give this a 94. This is stellar pour. Excellent. Wow. 90, 94 is high. Is that the highest that you've had on the show? I think I I, the, I think the straight from the barrel was a ninety four as well. Was it okay? So yeah, I, I think so. Here, let me just find. I can just flip back a page and we'll see. <laughs> All right, Aaron, are you ready, sir? Yes. Yeah, so I actually have two reviews. I have one from when the bottle was uh, just opened, and then I have one from now, which is towards the very end of the bottle, actually. So they'll be quite different. And uh, I'll start with when the bottle was fresh. On the nose, I got uh, some sweet maple, uh, a hint of freshly peeled banana, a little bit of oak. And uh, I thought the nose kind of opened up to more and more banana as I was nosing it and sipping it. And then I also got a little bit of baking spices on the nose. On the palate, I thought it was pretty spicy and peppery. I think that can get related to the alcohol burn a lot. And they do go a little bit hand in hand, but this was more kind of flavorful, not so much of a burn. And then on the palate, I really got, and I think this is how uh, Mr. K would, would describe it, a banana bomb. I just <laughs> had a lot of banana and it was pretty unique. Uh, I just I never had that much of an individual flavor and it was great. Uh, and then on the finish, I got some more of that maple. I got some of the toffee. It was really long, which I appreciated. And I got a little bit of the banana coming through on the finish. So freshly opened, I would give it a 92. Uh, I thought it was really amazing. And what I had today tasted a little more muted. I got on the nose some a little bit of oak, some smoke, some sweet honey. I did get plum and some red fruits which if you have a bottle and you look on the back of the bottle they do describe some of the fruits on there and uh aaron was spot on with the uh raspberry that's listed there so i got a little more of the plum and it was pretty rich on the nose which i like uh, on the palate i got some honey the mouthfeel felt a little bit lighter um and i got a little bit of oak some of the basic baking spices and some brown sugar kind of in between uh, the tongue and the finish. And on the finish, I got it was spicy and it was kind of medium long. So the it felt a little bit muted this time. And I would give it an 89 uh, towards the end of the bottle. So I would say let's go with the uh, the fresh review and give it a 92. 92. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's an interesting approach, too. I mean, because I think, as you are probably aware, I have caught flack in the past about my Blanton's 87. But that review was the tail end of that bottle, and it had been open for quite a while. And then, uh, do you know Traveling Fisherman, Casey Mabe? We, he, he's been on the show before. He yeah. uh, he did a, a Blanton's review similar to what what you just did with the Al Young, where he had one that was open for a while and then a fresh bottle. And the fresh bottle was night and day different, he said. It was just so much better than than the one that was on the tail end of its life. Seth, you stand behind that 87 because Fred Minnick did gave it an 88. You oh, stand yeah. behind that. Oh, I, I have always stood behind the 87. <laughs> always. Yeah. But yeah, that's a cool approach. Yeah, I think it's rare to be able to do, and I mean, these reviews were less than a month apart just because this bottle was pretty special. I was pouring out a lot of samples, so I've gone through it surprisingly fast, and that's why I've been able to do kind of a very beginning and very end so close together while I still have that memory of the original pour in my mind. Yeah. Well, you know, bottles can change drastically, especially in that amount of time. Yeah, I always tell people uh, if they don't like a bottle, they have to give it at least another chance after it's sat for a week or so. Yeah, yeah, I believe that is 
That is spot on, my man. Spot on. All right. For me, on the nose, it was uh, getting a good bit of caramel. Uh, There was some uh, brown sugar, some cinnamon, a little bit of clove, uh, some oak, and uh, a little citrus, maybe uh, orange peel, and some cherries, nutmeg. Uh, I agree with you, Aaron. You mentioned the leather on the nose and, uh, and the maple syrup there as well too just just a great nose uh, a lot of a lot of sweet and spice going on there that i really enjoy uh the palate i agree with both of you guys are just a great mouthfeel on it a uh, good bit of cinnamon in the beginning and a little bit of red pepper spice uh, to kick it kick it off and uh along with some oak it, i was surprised at how subtle the oak was on the palate though because Mm -hmm. you know we mentioned the the 23 year old uh what is it the oesk you know i just thought there there would be more oak present there on the palate but it's it's a good balance it's kept in check and then there is uh a little citrus here too uh to go along with the the cinnamon and the red pepper that i was getting it gets kind of sugary there as well uh kind of leads me into the the red hot candy taste um really enjoy that just a great palate all the way around uh, very enjoyable uh, the finish long of course at the at this proof it's it's hard not to be long in the finish uh starts off with uh the cinnamon spice that hangs around for quite a while especially on the top of my tongue it just it just stayed with me for for quite a while, uh, but then it kind of mellows out a little bit more into the uh, the sweeter caramel notes, uh, some of that sugar in there again, uh, along with I was getting a little apple on on the finish, which I thought was cool. Some butterscotch mixed in there with uh, a little bit of mint and uh, some some sweeter pipe tobacco towards the very very end of it for me, and I I thought it was a fantastic pour, and I gave it a ninety three. 93. All right. So we got a 94, a 92, and a 93. That leaves us at a 93. So easy math. We like yeah. easy math. Seth is right again. <laughs> well, it's very rare that I'm right. So I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. Excellent, man. Yeah, this is a great pour. That's a great pour. Thank, thank you so much for uh, sharing this with us because it is definitely great and I, I've really enjoyed it. So I, I'm going to take it away just from the review for for a second because we need to talk the, talk about this whiskey extravaganza that you went to. I'm, I'm interested. I want to hear all about it. So uh, I was lucky to get a ticket through a friend and on Instagram. He's Single Malt Alliance. Uh, so he's a pretty well-known Instagrammer and he does a lot of work with the single malt whiskey society. So they were hooking up with some tickets and he gave one to me. Uh, I wasn't really sure what to expect because they did have a lack of information online. Uh, So it was downtown at the union league club, which I'd never been to before. It was pretty swanky. Um, So it was business casual attire required. And you walked in, and there was, I would say, 40 tables set up. And each table had at least three whiskeys from oh, wow. you know one brand. I'd say the biggest presence there was definitely Brown Foreman, because they had five booths with just, you know, they had an Old Forester. They had uh, the Woodford. They had a Jack Daniels. And then they also had the whiskeys uh without the eight which was the ben reick and glenn glassa i believe um but they there were just a ton of whiskeys there and no matter how small anyone was pouring it was still too much because you really had to pace yourself to be able to get down the line and try everything oh yeah but uh, but it, it was a blast yeah i gotta try a ton of whiskeys that i never had before and I also thought it, it kind of it forced me to really taste each whiskey because I knew I only had you know a quarter of an ounce to taste this whiskey, mm-hmm. and then I had it on. Um, so it it forced me to do that, and it, yeah, it was a ton of fun. Um, 
to kind of list through some of the people that were there. Virginia Distillery was there, and they they did a great job. Um, they had a their standard port finish, and they also had a cider barrel finished and a Chardonnay barrel finished, and those I'd never had before. Hmm. Really unique. I like the cider a lot. Uh, Yellowstone was there. They had a rye, a two-year rye that was just phenomenal. I, I don't think I've ever had uh, such a young whiskey that was a rye that was that good. And uh, kind of looking through photos right now, uh, Ben Romick, which is a scotch, they had eight different whiskeys at their table, which I think was the most from one distillery. Wow. Entire event. And some I didn't like, but they had three bottles that I really liked and I'm definitely going to seek out and see what the price point is and snatch some of those. Aaron and I talked about this earlier, actually. I don't know if Seth had, uh, had known about this, but uh, three weeks ago I was at Kavalan in Taiwan, which is a single malt whiskey distillery. Mm-hmm. And so uh, they weren't directly there, but there was a table with just a general amount of overseas whiskey. Uh, it wasn't really from... They must have been owned by one parent company, but they had two Kavalons there, the x and the Sherry. Uh, both were pretty good. Anything from the Solus series is, is pretty good. Uh, they're marked up in the States by a lot. You're looking at kind of two to $300 a bottle, but when you get it overseas, it's... 90 to 120 which i think is absolutely worth it the port finish i tried there was just amazing and when i am able to source a bottle from taiwan so i don't have to pay the 300 in the states i will definitely send the both of you some samples because it was some pretty ridiculous whiskey and they only age kind of four to five years because of just how tropical the climate is Mm -hmm. yeah so those flavors come in really fast and they 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 don't age state anything because they're all so young. They don't want to shy away people from paying those premium price points for something that tastes great, but some people just are really stuck on age statements. Yeah, yeah. I've actually had uh, the I have a bottle of the the bourbon finished or bourbon cast finished, and uh, I I love it. And I I was interested in getting the sherry cast, but. Uh, that seemed like it came and went so quick, and I it, it never came through Ohio, and I just never really got a chance to get it anywhere else. But uh, the bourbon uh, cast one was great, though. I don't think I've had any of any of the releases that they have that I'm aware of that I can remember. They have a surprising amount of whiskeys for how young they are as a distillery. I I mean they've just done kind of every cast finish you can imagine. And then they have several other offerings that are just uniquely branded in their own way. So it is, it is a lot to get through that distillery. Sounds like it. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you had a good time and there's a good amount of bourbon, scotches, anything else? Irish whiskey there. Uh, there was some Irish whiskey. Uh, Hyde was there, which I think, okay. I think in general in the States, Irish whiskey is underrepresented. I think Jameson kind of ruins everyone thinking about Irish whiskey because that's got the best marketing and that's all that's out there. But there are some, yeah. I'd say there's a lot of Irish whiskeys that maybe just haven't hit the market yet or are harder to find, but they, you know, can compete head to head with those Scottish single malts and are just oh, yeah. as good. I'm, I'm with you. I'm a big fan of uh, yellow spot and uh, red breast 15. Yeah, I believe Jim Murray just gave Redbreast 21 the best, uh, I think I, it might have been Irish exclusive whiskey of the year, but it, it definitely was up there on his list of whiskeys. And Redbreast seems to have the best accolades out of the Irish whiskeys. Yeah, I've wanted to try those. I, I see them on shelves, not the, not the, uh, the, the ultra aged, but the, the 12 I see quite a bit. Uh, but I've I've always wanted to try them. I've just never picked them up for whatever reason. They are they the price point that they start at is sixty dollars at least at Finney's in Chicago, which is a little bit high I would say because um, you can look at those single malts from Scotland and you could start at thirty and still get a pretty decent bottle. So I think sixty is a little bit high, but 
for if, for Redbreast at least, I think it's worth taking that that leap of faith and trying their whiskey. Well, now I guess I'll have to do it. I I really enjoy the uh, Redbreast cast strength. I don't know that I've seen that that I'm aware of. I'll have to seek it out though. Yeah, some of the cast strengths it might be uh you know once or twice a year releases they might be harder to find because I've never seen the Redbreast cast strength either. Well, I will have to send both of you samples. All right. I like it. So before the break, you mentioned that you kind of got into whiskey because your parents were were fans of whiskey. Did they? What did they typically drink? Um, yeah, so both my parents are fans of whiskey. A little bit more my dad, but they've both done the bourbon trail twice. So that's two times more than I have. I definitely can say that I've surpassed them. Uh, since I am now their bourbon supplier, whenever there's a special release coming out, <laughs> I'm the one who can hook them up. Uh, so yeah, one of the samples of the Al Young I gave away was to one was to my brother and one was to my my dad, uh, just so they would get a chance to try it. And they they kind of appreciated alcohol always, so nicer wines, good tequila, kind of any liquor they could appreciate the the time and effort that went into it and wouldn't just kind of be like is it smooth can it get me wasted so growing up they would kind of give me little tastes of certain things so that kind of conditioned me to be more of a connoisseur at a younger age Uh, and i think that helped me get into bourbon and single malts too uh because i could I think after a while, your palate just gets conditioned to the alcohol and you start picking up more and more flavor and you, that's when it really starts getting fun. Oh yeah. Uh, So a lot of, a lot of new people will have some trouble getting into it. And I think you just have to spend a little time tasting a lot of things and getting acclimated. Uh, But now that I'm here, it's, it's great and it's a ton of fun and it's not great for my wallet, but it's, (laughs) You know, other than that, it's it's a lot of fun, and I would recommend it to to anyone who's, who's looking to get into it. Absolutely, definitely, absolutely. So, so what were what were your parents go to? What what do they usually drink? Like on a you come home, you know, from school, and dad's sitting down pouring a drink. What what is he pouring? It's it's a little bit different now because he started early enough that you know he was drinking pappy. Because he could, you'd go buy it off the shelf. Uh, so he's nice. definitely a little bit salty now because <laughs> it's picked up, and he has been buying from the same store for years. And they would sell him Pappy, but they don't even get it anymore because everyone wants it. Um, so luckily, he's got a little bit of a stash. But I would say he's a big fan of the weeded bourbons. Okay. Uh, both my mom and my dad uh, go nuts for Elmer T. Lee. They really like that okay. one. The price point's great. And it's luckily they can kind of find one or two each year. So they get something. Um, they like Willet. They had a 20 year. That was probably the best bourbon I've had to date. And it was, I think, 67.3%. Oh, nice. So, you know, barely legal. Uh, I think at, after 75, it's basically ever clear. But. Uh, that one was phenomenal. Uh, you you had to be a little bit prepared for that much alcohol, but the moment you got past that, it was just so smooth and creamy and rich. Uh, it kind of it blew my mind that whiskey could taste like that. Well, mom and dad are drinking good. So. Sounds yeah, like they it. are. That's they funny because my, my mom never drank it. I mean she she grew up closer to I mean bourbon country. Uh, than what my dad did, but I mean, she you know she was always around it, and but she never drank it. You know, she would drink wine, or I mean, still does. Um, but she's the uh, Silverback has a honey, honey rye whiskey that she really enjoys, and it's same with my wife. She doesn't she doesn't drink whiskey, but she likes that honey rye. So I'm like, well, if maybe if this is your gateway, I can eventually suck you into it. But then I don't know that I want her sucked into it because then she starts drinking my stuff. Yeah, the trade off. That's true. Yep. What else? Anything right. else? I don't know. Uh, this Al Young was phenomenal, and 
I don't know. It was 93. Wow. So when you guys last talked about it on one of the reviews, Seth, you said you had two bottles or you had one and you were supposed to get a second. Hey, I got the shaft on the one from my store uh, because I'd gone in asking about it. And he, when I was there in the store, he called his rep uh, that, that carries the four roses products and the guy, it was, it was very funny. I, I don't know if I mentioned this on the show or not, but the, the rep answered the phone and didn't say hi, didn't say anything, knew exactly what he was calling about and just said, I haven't gotten mine yet. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so the, the store owner was like, okay, well, when you do, you owe me a favor because I, you know, I sold, you know, I, I took on a, a large inventory of yellow label and I sold all that. So you owe me a favor. Well, then I, I, I went back, I don't know, it was probably two or three weeks later. And he, he, I, I asked him about it and he said, wait, didn't, didn't you get one? He said, because I got two bottles. He said, I thought I gave you one. I was like, no, man, I didn't, I didn't get one. Oh man, I'm so sorry. I thought that you got one. And so I, I don't know. I've just, I've fallen out of good graces of that store. Cause it's, it's a little bit out of the way now. I used to go in there a lot. So I don't know if it was just him giving it to, to other people that are more frequent customers nowadays or what, but you know, whatever. I, I wasn't totally heartbroken about it. Maybe he'll save me something this fall. Don't know. But uh, yeah, I missed missed it there, missed it there. But you got one still. Yes, I did get one. I did get one. And Aaron, did you uh, did you happen to get any? I did finally land one. It was, uh, you know, Seth was making fun of me because I picked up that uh, that Basil Hayden Rye. But there's a, <laughs> there there's there's reasons I pick up stuff. You know, when the manager hands you something, goes, "Hey, we got this new in." You know, you. You go, well, I don't really need this, but maybe this m- might might help out in the long run. And then and then you get that phone call saying, hey, we, hey, Aaron, we just got that uh, Al Young in. We only got two bottles. Do you want one? You think, hey, man, I got a bottle of awesome Basil Hayden Rye. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll be right up. And it's 80 proof glory. Yeah. So, yep. So I, I, so I did land one. Nice. So I was, I'm pretty excited about that because it, it is a phenomenal pour, and hopefully, uh, who knows? Maybe we'll land. Maybe we'll all land too. It's, it's still probably going around. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, Jeremy Shell ended up uh, helping me out with the one that I got, so I was I was happy about that. Extremely happy, especially now that I've tried it. I'm even more happy. Yeah, that Jeremy Shell's such a nice guy. He he's is so good. He's he's, a, he's too he's too good to us. He's a swell man, that yeah. Jeremy Shell. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Uh, I would like to just mention, um, seeing as this is this is a really hard bottle to get, uh, I will be doing a sample giveaway via Instagram, uh, just to kind of help out someone who wasn't able to get the bottle. I know that there were I think, a little over 10,000 total. And I know a lot of bars are trying to buy them up because they can charge a pretty high price point for a shot and make a killing off the bottle. Uh, so I will be doing a sample giveaway, maybe multiple, um, because I got pretty lucky with this release. So anyone listening, if you were not able to try it and you really want to, uh, be on the lookout for that. And I'll be... I'll try to coordinate with Seth and Aaron to uh, get the word out and hopefully get it to uh, a lucky person who really deserves a nice pour of four roses. I dig it, man. That's excellent. That's a great giveaway. Maybe I'll throw in something good. There you go. I should too, then. I gotta get to drinking some of my samples, man. I I need more empty two-ounce Boston bottles. Yeah. Yeah, I actually opened up one of the uh, Knob Creeks that Aaron sent me today. And oh, which it was one? the WB5 pick, the 13 year, four month. And it's really good. Oh, 13 year, four. Uh, that's the uh, Whiskey Barrel Society pick that I did. Yeah, that one's. Okay. That's a solid, solid one. That's 
that's when I was telling you they rolled out the fourth barrel for us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think I mean the I sent you a thirteen year sample and Yeah. It's only been two, but so far thirteen years seems like the sweet spot for Knob Creek yeah. because yeah. miles ahead of everything else I've had. Did I send you a fifteen year by chance? Uh you did. I haven't opened it yet. But okay. that one that one looked exciting just because of how old it was. If I didn't, let me know, because I, I have one open, and it's crazy good. You don't see too many 15s sitting around. Yeah. So. Did you send him some of that Lincoln Road? Uh, lucky, maybe. Lucky 7? It's possible. I All the Lucky 7, no, because I was finished with that bottle, but I do have a new one. Ah. It will be... I told you, I, I told you after... After that month of sitting peanut brittle, it was yeah just amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely reordered, and I, lucky enough, he had had still had some. So, well, I'll have to send you some of that. I should pop the bottle and let it start opening up. Yes, do it now. All right. So ninety three, Al Young. Ninety three for Al Young. Excellent. Great pour. Great guy. Yeah. Aaron, where can folks find you, sir? Folks can find me on Instagram at Windy City Whiskey, and that's whiskey with an E. Uh, I'm also on Twitter at Windy City Whiskey, but the letter I in each word is taken out because they don't allow usernames that long. Uh, Twitter's not that exciting. It's really just reposts of whatever I post to Instagram. Um, but if you're not on Instagram, you're only on Twitter. It's Almost as good as my Instagram because it's exactly the same. So uh, both of those are the best places to find me. Excellent. Well, you do better on Twitter than I do then because I don't even post stuff from Instagram on Twitter. They just have the button that you click and then it just copies your post from Instagram to Twitter. So I don't really do much work, but it looks good on me. There you go. All in the thumbs. What about you, Cave? Well, hopefully you can find me at some point hanging with Aaron at the Twisted Spoke and Delightless in Chicago. Ooh. But until then, you can find me at Bourbon Cave on Instagram and Twitter. Always here on the Firewater Review. Write high proof single barrel columns for Bourbon Zeppelin and also write for the Sons of Winston Churchill. Fantastic. And I'm Seth P. Brown on Instagram and occasionally on Twitter. Not really. Uh, you can find me on this show, of course. You can find me on the Son of Winston Churchill. And you can find Son of Winston Churchill on Instagram at Son of Winston Churchill. Or you can visit the blog for all kinds of reviews on all different kinds of whiskey. And you can find that at sow.blogspot.com. And you can find all of our shows at abvnetwork.com. You can find them in Google Play, iTunes, and Stitcher. You can find this show on the YouTubes, audio only, no video. And that's it. Aaron, thanks for coming on, buddy. We appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for having me. Uh, it's, it's pretty crazy being someone who has listened to the podcast and is now on the podcast. So it's... uh. I don't know if it's totally a dream come true, but it's it's something close to that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're just two regular dudes that like whiskey yep. and like to talk about like it. Like to talk about it. Yep. Yep. But yeah, thanks for coming on, man. It was a lot of fun. We'll have to have you on again. Yeah, I'll just have to find another uh, special bottle to send you guys. Yeah, or we can send you one. Yeah, it doesn't have to be special. Store no. picks. Knob Creek, anything. You, you send it our way and find something special. If not, if you just want to call and, and hang with us, but sometimes we're just sitting here talking, just the two of us. It's always fun to have another guest. So, Yeah, sounds great. Excellent. Well, thanks again, and I think that does it. A 93 for Al Young. 93. 93. Until next time, please drink responsibly and cheers. Later. Bye.
The Fire Water Review is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to become a sponsor, please visit abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers. Cheers.